What's up, Dennis here, Analog Archives. Hope everybody's doing uh, okay in 2024. It is my first video from 2024, and it is the metal tag of 2024. I think uh, there's a theme here, 2024. All right, um, yeah, so seen a lot of these videos and I always do when I've been doing one I think since like 2020 or 2021 um, rock scouts always done it but this year it's uh, heavy metallurgy doing it with um, Marty and Alan um, I think metal Mickey Mike had a hand in some of the questions I'm not 100% positive which ones but um, yeah metal tag was just fucking talk about metal metal questions I guess I don't know it's always fun to do uh, what we're drinking here is a shoehorn um, this is from a brewing company here in uh, Carson City which is about half an hour from my house um, uh, shoe tree brewing which I haven't actually been to, actually. It's a double IPA. I think it's like a... Yeah, it's a 9.2%. Mm, okay. Have a few of these, and uh, yeah, you're fucked up. But uh, anyways, it's a it's a really good beer. I had this in Virginia City one time before I, they were available in the store. What we're spinning here is a band called Seth Black Metal Band I'm not sure where they're from honestly um, this is their demo I believe from 96 and a mini CD from 97 just your traditional fucking black metal shit I guess and it's on it's some weird fucking like I guess there was 999 pressed handwritten little fucking thing there for all you nerds like me <laughs> anyways fuck it man I'm gonna have to read these off my phone so bear with me um, name a release you're eagerly anticipating in 2024 um not much man not much I'd kind of just take it as it flows um, obviously I want to I want to hear the King Diamond. I want to hear the Exodus. It's not like I'm going to be like blown away by those records, but Judas Priest, I want to hear. Uh, Master, which I already heard, which is killer. But for me, man, it's what I'm really kind of excited about with 2024 is the Japanese scene. A lot of bands coming out of there, like hardcore bands, uh, death metal bands, grindcore bands, crust bands, like they're mixing the crust with the fucking death metal type shit, 90s style, and they do it with the fucking, like a genuine feel to it, which I fucking love. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what's coming out of Japan. Every time I hear a band from Japan, I generally like them. Um, and with the old hard, hardcore type stuff, like Gauze and Atu and uh, Gestunk, that kind of shit, love that shit. So hopefully we get some of that stuff. Um, yeah, man, love it. So that's what I'm looking forward to in 2024. Um, Chinese New Year, 2024 is the year of the dragon. Show a record with some dragons. And no motherfucker has shown this record. And it's got multiple dragons on it. English Dogs, Forward Into Battle, one of my favorite records. Fuck yeah, dude. Love that fucking cover. That's a... I always forget his fucking name. I even have a hand painting by this guy. Or not a hand painting, but a print signed by him. Um, but for some reason, his name always el eludes me. Uh, his wife did paintings as well with him, which is cool. Uh, fuck. Boris, Boris Vallejo. Boris Vallejo. Um, yeah, man. Fucking killer shit. Love this record. Just fucking one of the best crossover records ever. Yeah, man. English Dogs, Forward Into Battle, Dragons. All right, up next, 
we have what was your favorite album that you acquired in 2023 I don't honestly know um, I acquired a lot of stuff in 2023 OG shit new shit um, but one thing I was really stoked about uh, was this Phantasm album that I've been wanting uh, Russian death metal from I think they're from 93 um, yeah man Nuclear War put this out Thing, same thing with the ass bit. I got that one too. That shit rips. But yeah, I really wanted this record. I've been looking for it for a long time. Trying to get an OG press. Um, but I'm glad to have this fucking repress. This shit rips. If you like old school fucking 90s death metal, get this shit, man. Also, I was super stoked to get this. Um, the Agnostic Front United Blood LP. Um, I think this is one of those record store day things. I don't, I think it's just on black or something. Oh no, it's on like red. Yeah, man. Fucking classic agnostic front. You gotta have this shit. If you're a hardcore fan, you just fucking need it. It's not an option really. And you, it's like impossible to find. So super glad to get that. All right. Up next. Next question. Uh, was there a title in 2023 that you were satisfied to purchase digitally? No. Um, I didn't... I probably got some stuff digitally, just buying it, like a demo, or like a demo re-release or something on Bandcamp, and they just give you a digital release. Um, but... Yeah, I didn't just go to Bandcamp or anywhere just to buy a digital release. I just always got it with something. And I never listened to that. I listen to Spotify. Um, I pay for an account on Spotify. And honestly, it's fucking amazing, man. Uh, probably, like, the most stuff I listen to. Because I'm, like, never home. I'm always, I work 60 plus hours um, every week. So, uh, yeah. I just, I'm always on the road and shit like that. And I have... I think I'm gonna open my Spotify right now. But I think I have, dude. Like And I, I don't fuck around on Spotify. I have probably about t- twenty or thirty different playlists that I made specifically for different things. Um in, like and they're all like thirteen to twenty something hours long, like my Spotify won't open right now. Fuck this shit. Why am I paying for this? <laughs> Anyways, so I have like all these different playlists that I listen to depending on what I'm in the mood for. Whether it's old school death metal, old school thrash, new school thrash, new school death metal. And I just add these hardcore, um, even like like trucking songs or outlaw country mixes. I just have all my mixes on there. So whatever I'm in the mood for, I just put that shit on. So I would say Spotify, seeing as how I pay for it, I get it. The artists don't make shit on that, um, which kind of sucks. I think they should get way more money, but it is what it is. But uh, I would say that uh, Spotify for sure. Uh, show an album that musically doesn't match the cover art. I mean, there's a lot, right? But I think for me as a kid, when I bought this record, I was expecting this really fucking gory fucking thrash metal record. Just with the gore and these guys on the back with the fire and fucking cod pieces and shit like this. I was like, okay, this is going to be like next level Slayer. Nah, it's just like shock rock bordering on speed metal but more in the wasp kind of aim um it's still a good record i like it um shock rock crack the whip impaler heaven's force it's good stuff but it's not and i even i think even on the combat video like ultimate revenge it's like they're like hardcore impaler rise of the mutants nah man this is just it's a, it's good. It's not. It's this isn't even the version on combat. This is on like IRD. I don't know, man. Maybe this was like the first press. Who knows? I don't fucking know. You guys tell me. 
All right, up next we have... Uh, who is a metal artist that you, <laughs> you own the most items by? And I think, coming from my age and anyone else, it's, it's going to be fucking Maiden, right? We, we already have, like, all that shit. I pulled out a couple, like, cool things that I get from Maiden. Um, I probably showed some of these. I don't know. Like, when I was a kid, I was always Maiden. Got this fucking sick trooper fucking pitcher disc, shaped pitcher disc. Um, Aces High Pitcher Disc. And then all these like maxi singles that they came out with. I have the seven inches of these two. I uh, lo always love this cover, Number of the Beast. Um, got a fucking sealed Killers record. Always cool to have a sealed Iron Maiden record, especially Killers. Just more of these, like, kind of live track type things. Women in uniform. They all had, like, cool covers, too. They all had, like, alternative art from, like, the record. So that was always cool. I think that was a big thing for me with Iron Maiden, even when I was a kid, was, like, the artwork. Like, with Eddie and just, I mean, I feel like Derek Riggs was kind of like a, definitely, like, an inspiration for me, like, growing up as an artist and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah. And I have tons more. I mean, obviously, all the records up to... Um, probably... I don't know, man. That one weird record with, like, the digital cover. I mean, I think kind of Iron Maiden's fallen off, but... Um... Let's see, next question. Show an album that you blind bought in 2023. All right. This is kind of a cool one. It is a band called Over the Top. And it's Virginia Beach Thrash. Demos 87 and 89 on Eastern Front Records. Really cool fucking demos. Uh, I think I found this at Streetlight when I was in the Bay Area. And I was like, oh, that looks killer, man. Um, yeah, and here it says, for fans of Slayer, At War, and Whiplash. And I totally agree with that. Yeah, this, this, these demos rip, dude. Um, killer shit. Glad to pick this up. Um, as a blind buy, one demo on one side, one demo on the other. Killer shit. Check it out if you want to hear like some killer old school thrash. Um, show a title that you own on more than one format. You guys probably won't be that surprised. Uh, Necrophagia, Season of the Dead. This is the OG Press on New Renaissance. Um, here's the picture disc. Came out on Redstream. Those aren't nipples, so YouTube can't. Those are like covered nipples. They're like steel nipples, so they're covered. Um, and the CD. Got the OG CD on New Renaissance. And the fucking cassette on New Renaissance. So. All of the above. I also have another copy that was released like two years ago on like Green Splatter, but I don't know where it's at, so... But yeah, so I have like five different versions of that record. I'm looking for the tapped cassette from Poland. If anyone's holding, I will pay you for that. All right. Um, up next. Show an album that you... Oh, I already did that one. Blind bought. Um, show a title... Bookworm, show off a release concept conceptually inspired by literature. And this is question nine. Uh, we're going back to a band we already talked about. Um, but this is English Dogs, where legend began. OG Gatefold, obviously, uh, fucking Lord of the Rings, man. It's got a map, it's got a fucking map and everything. It was a cool record. 
Took me a while to get into. I'm still not like the biggest fan of this record, but I like it. Um, yeah, I mean, just with the songs. You got Middle Earth. A Tomb of a Traveler's Past. Yeah, it's just all fucking Tolkien shit. But yeah, this is a killer record. Check it out. Very epic for a crossover band. Kind of their downfall, I think. Because people want it more like the first record, or the first full length, than they got this. But um, It's a cool record. Definitely a killer thrash speed metal uh, crossover record. Check it out. All right. Up next, name a band that you would travel a considerable distance to see live in 2024. There's no band I'm traveling to see. Um, yeah, it's whatever, dude. I've seen fucking every band I've wanted to see, except for probably Massacre, but I'm not traveling to see Massacre. Um, I've seen all the fucking major death metal bands in their prime. I don't know, man. There's nothing. There's nothing. Maybe... Nah. Because, like, the old bands, they already have, like... They're just not good anymore, so... It's just... I mean, the only time I travel, like... Let's say a bunch of YouTube dudes got together, and they're like... Hey, we're all gonna hang out at, like, some festival. Like, we're gonna have a big get-together or something. Maybe I'd go to that, but... Just to hang out. It wouldn't be for the bands, though. It'd be for just to hang out fucking chill with the dudes all right up next um soured grapes show a 2023 release that you enthusiastically purchased but eventually lost interest in nothing i did there was nothing i bought in 2023 i was like i gotta get this and then lost interest in everything i bought i liked um so yeah nothing that I lost interest in or nothing I was like super pumped about that I bought that sucked that are, are that I lost interest in so uh, nothing for me the golden child name an artist that you feel can do no wrong hmm this is an interesting question um, for me I picked this man and even though they don't I mean uh, in Patigo, I really feel like their whole everything they put out when they were around was very essential to the death metal scene. Um, so yeah, this one and this is, I mean, I don't know, this is on Wild Rags, I think. Yeah, Wild Rags Records, OG Press. All this shit's on OG Press, <laughs> unless I say it's not. Um, but yeah, like this is just a re-release, but I have an original too, Horror of the Zombies. Um, and the OG demo, Giallo. I mean, this this was a band that was like incorporating what I was into or what I'm still into, um, kind of underground horror movies and um, death metal, and they had a really unique style. And I don't think anyone's ever captured that. I have seven inches um, as well from them, and uh, they just have this kind of. They have like a cool feel about them too. Like they don't take themselves super serious, um, which is cool. It's more like they're just having fun and they're just talking horror and gore. And it's kind of like just watching blood sucking freaks or something. Um, where some people will take it to like, oh, this is this is not right or whatever it is. And then other people will just be like, oh, they're just having fun. A lot of movie intros and stuff like that that other bands weren't doing at the time great great fucking band to me can do no wrong never have um all right overstayed welcome name a band that you wish would have quit when they were ahead <laughs> i mean there's so many dude i think i just feel like any band that is still going right now i mean there's a few that are still good but i don't know i think i don't know if they should have quit and that, it's a subjective question as well, because you could have some kid, maybe like a 12-year-old or 11-year-old that goes into the fucking Walmart and buys a new Metallica, right? And he thinks, oh man, this is fucking good. I'm going to go check out other bands like this. 
Um, so, you, I mean, it's hard to say. Like, for me, Metallica should have quit a long time ago, or Iron Maiden, uh, Judas Priest, all those bands. Like, they're just putting out stuff that just... I feel like us as fans, old fans, we grasp onto that stuff and we want to like it because it's it's our youth, right? I feel like if it's okay, we say we give it a pass. But to someone new, they can listen to it and be like, "This it's something new for them." I just feel like anything an old band releases is just a pass. It's like, oh, it's respectable, so we'll let it go. Megadeth, inc- including Megadeth, um, whereas it's not anywhere near as good as anything they put out like in the last 20 years or whatever it is. So, just my opinion, but uh, it's it's true, man. I mean, but those guys that buy that new Metallica or buy that new Megadeth and go back and listen to the old stuff, then they'll be like, oh, wow, man, this is good. Maybe I'll buy Slayer, Hella Waits, or, you know, Iron Maiden Killers, or whatever they're going to buy. But it gets them into the door of metal, and that's what it's about for me. Or for, like, keeping the scene alive in general. So, yeah, I can't I can't really say, like, a band should stop. Because they, they got that clout, right? And just because of that clout, people buy their stuff. Even if it's just a kid going, oh, I heard of Iron Maiden, or I heard of Metallica, I'm going to buy this record. Like, I'm here with my grandma or my mom, and she'll buy me the record. So fucking do it, man, because they'll get into something else. So keep this, keep the scene alive somewhat. Um, show a band release that you bought in 2023 as a di- direct result of watching someone's YouTube channel. This is kind of a weird one, because... Um, this I just found this last year. Um, Jean Michel Jarre. I'm, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Oxygen, um, killer Moog, atmospheric type shit that I love. Kind of like Tumita, which I've mentioned before. Really cool stuff. Um, and Matt from the Dark Path had recommended this record um, at one point. I finally found it, so I was like, oh shit. I, I gotta grab that, right? So, yeah, good shit, man. Love this record. Um, even though it's from the 70s. Uh, let's see. Show us an otherwise good album that ends up suffering from being too long. Oh, man. I mean, this could have went a lot of ways, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go with Metallica and Justice for All. It's a good record, but... Oh my god, some of the songs, I mean, that's Metallica in general. They just, every song, there's no song except for Dyer's Eve and Harvester's Sorrow that are under six minutes. And they're, and Harvester's only under by like 30 seconds, 60 seconds. Not even 60, that's a minute. Like 40 seconds or something like that. So, um, yeah, I don't know, man. The songs on here, I like how it says nine new songs. Why would there be, like, repeat songs on a new record? Makes no sense. Um, Blacken's a great song, and Justice for All, nine minutes and 44 seconds. Um, That song probably could have been brought down. Eye of the Beholder's an okay song, but, again, shortened. One classic. I'll give that one a pass. I think that one deserves a seven-minute song. song or seven minute time shortest straw another good one but harvester sorrow i think is good at five minutes and 42 seconds frayed ends of sanity at seven minutes and 40 seconds that could have been a a five minute song to live is to die nine minutes and 48 seconds bring it down man (laughs) that could have been a six minute song dyer's eve five minutes eh. That song, that's like a throwaway song. One of their, like, let's end it on a, like, we're still thrash, right? What they did on Master of Puppets. That's, yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is, it's a good, I like this better than Master of Puppets, but um, it still seems very uh, bloated. And they're still doing that shit, right? Um, But, yeah, that definitely could have been one they could have shortened down. For me, anyways. 
All right, what's next? Um, show your favorite band t-shirt. All right, well, I've pulled a few out that you guys haven't seen. These aren't really, I mean, these are some of my favorites. Um, I like, I just love shirts in general, but old school Broken Bones shirt, the I owe you nothing, classic fucking 80s. And then the, uh, oh yeah, man, gotta have this one. Show this on the uh, Merciful Fate. This uh, show I did with Jeff, but yeah, man. The uh, US Tour shirt, OG. And last but not least, I love this print on this shirt. Agnostic front, cause for alarm. Look at those colors on that with the Sean Taggart art. Love that shit, man. Great stuff. All right. Yeah, some killer shirts that I haven't shown before. I have so many goddamn shirts. Uh, Cher Banner has been around for at least 24 years that you think is still going strong and creatively relevant. I'm going to pick a band that really hasn't faltered from when they started. They still kind of pretty much just sound the same. Um, but I'm going with Macabre. This is Gloom. But I think anything Macabre has done, I mean, you get, especially their last record was really good too. Uh, but yeah, I think this band has stayed strong and stayed pretty relevant to what they are um, since the fucking early 90s. So yeah, man macabre killer shit all right up uh, next question um share your favorite band mascot I really have a favorite band mascot but if i had to pick um probably sergeant d kind of just a badass just felt like kind of just as pretty much like the billy milano persona Obviously went on to do the MOD stuff as well, but yeah, man, this guy takes no fucking shit, right? With his anarchy helmet. I just love the cover too. Just like, it's like a total like Sharpie pen drawing, which fucking rules. So. All right, up next. Uh, share a random pool from your collection. No peeking. Oh crap. All right, I'm going to go over here to... I'll pick something from the cassettes. So let me move this fucking shit so I can go grab something. All right, let's see what we grabbed. Huh. This is a weird one. Uh, Venom, Satanic Kiss. This is a kind of like a best of type of thing. I actually got this from the dude in um, Wundergang. We were doing a tape trade and he sent me this. It's got like a full um, fold out with the upside down cross. Um, kind of just a best of Venom type of shit, but uh, this was pretty hard to get. And I really wanted it. And he was like, yeah, dude, I'll send you one. So, um, yeah, Venom, Satanicist compilation all right i think we're at the last question show an album from a metal band that others may consider may not consider metal um i'm gonna go with uh uriah heap i just pulled this one out um the magician's birthday but i think if you see that record cover in the in the store you're just thinking yes because of the you know the um, the artist and everything, but yeah, everything this this band. I mean, the first few records, even the first one, just has a kind of Sabbathy, like psychedelic metal feel to it. And I don't think Uriah Heep gets enough credit, honestly. Uh, but yeah, Uriah Heep for me is my pick for people that don't consider them a metal album. 
Um, there was another question I missed here. Or maybe it's not here. Overstayed welcome. No, that's not it. No, well, maybe not. Alright, well, I thought there was another question because I pulled a record. I guess... Hmm. I guess it was the band that said they should pretty much cut it out. Overstayed welcome. Name a band that you wish would have quit when they were ahead. Um, that was it. Overstayed welcome. Name a band that you would have wished they quit. Um, I kind of touched on it, but for me, I think for me, a band that should have quit while they were ahead was Creator, man. I think this is probably the last, besides Flag of Hate, which I loved. When they started to turn more to the like Bay Area type sound, I just they just didn't gel with me. Like that was the stuff for me was um, endless pain and pleasure to kill. And don't get me wrong, I'll listen to. I don't think like anything they've released is really horrible. But um, then they, this has always been a band to me that I always felt like really wanted to make it big. Like they would try anything they could to change their style to meet what was going on in the scene at the time. I'm really surprised they didn't make a new metal record. I guess Cause for Conflict is the closest for that, but um, I don't know, man. Especially their records now are really, really boring. Same thing with Destruction. I just, I think Sodom is a little bit better than those guys. Although Sodom had their kind of lulls in the 90s as well. Um, but for me, like, Creator is just like, dude, just pack it in, man. You guys are just, like, making the same record over and over again. Um, but, yeah, it's just, it's not good. Like, I don't ever, like, hear a new Creator album where I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, man, this shit rules. Um, for me, it's always like, eh, it's okay. And again, it's that, that whole metalhead thing where I, I'm just like, eh, maybe someone might hear this and get into the older stuff so I can't really slag on it too much but for me I don't think Creator's one of those bands someone's gonna like go down a rabbit hole into metal on it's just not a band that uh, most general people would listen to I guess Metallica and Iron Maiden or Judas Priest those are bands that more people will gravitate to from heavy metal new metal um, I don't mean NU metal I mean NEW metal um, but they know those names, so they'll go down that rabbit hole to check out other stuff. I don't think anyone's reaching for the new creator and, and going, man, I love this record. I should listen to metal. So, I don't know. For me, it's not like... For me, I felt like cr creator, same thing with Entombed, Carcass, those bands. They made a distinctive decision to change their style to appeal to more people. And it just wasn't for me. Um, but my opinion, so whatever you want to do with it. Um, but yeah. Anyways, that's a list. Thanks, Marty, Alan, Rock Scout, Metal Mickey, all you dudes. Um, cheers, and hopefully we'll have something cool coming up in 2024. Oh, we will. Fuck yeah. Cheers, man. Later.